Eddie Hearn's fake outrage over PED users is pretty laughable at this point. This is his latest interview on IFL TV. And in this interview, Coogan asks him about the rumor that Tyson Fury could face Jarrell Miller later on this year. And Eddie Hearn responds by saying, and I'm paraphrasing now, but he responds by saying something like, this is terrible. How could they even contemplate working with Jarrell Miller when he only just popped for PEDs a couple of weeks back? He hasn't even served out his ban. He hasn't even shown any remorse. And yet they're contemplating having him fight Tyson Fury later on in the year. This is terrible. So Hearn is virtue signaling. And he's essentially having a sly pop at Bob Arum. Now, to be fair, when Eddie Hearn first went over to the United States and launched the zone, he was very complimentary of Bob Arum uh, in the media and talked about how he's got a good relationship with Bob and he likes him and respects him. And then seemingly out of nowhere, Bob Arum starts taking shots at Eddie Hearn, seemingly unprovoked. Hearn talked about that in a couple of interviews and said he was kind of caught off guard by Bob Arum coming at his neck. But then after taking some shots at him, he said Bob Arum would call him up and say, hey, when are we going to make this fight, Eddie? So Eddie kind of understands that that's the way people do business in the American boxing scene. Certainly with people like Bob Arum, they might take shots at you in public, but behind the scenes, they're still happy to do business. So he said that caught him a little bit off guard and maybe this is his way of playing that game with Bob Arum because Arum has been taking shots at him. So he's like, okay, we can play that game. Bob Two can play at that. I'll take shots back at you. So to me, this is kind of a not so subliminal shot at Bob Arum trying to question Bob's ethics for even contemplating having Jarrell Miller face Tyson Fury when Miller again hasn't served out a ban and hasn't shown any remorse. But aside from him taking shots back at uh, Bob Arum, firing back, Eddie Hearn is being very contradictory here and hypocritical because this is a man who once said that drug cheats should be banned for life. But no sooner had he said that, that he actually signed Luis Ortiz. And Ortiz got popped for steroids the first time he got popped. Eddie Hearn still had no issue signing him. Later on, he had Alexander Povetkin fight on Anthony Joshua's undercard. That was the Joseph Parker undercard. Again, Povetkin popped for PEDs multiple times. And then obviously, Joshua fought Povetkin as his mandatory. And even since then, Eddie Hearn has left the door open to work in with Alexander Povetkin on the zone, on matchroom shows. He's also worked with Lucas Brown and several other people who have popped for PEDs. Of course, Dylan White got popped for an over-the-counter supplement, which was banned uh, just a few weeks before he got popped. In that instance, I guess you can, you know, uh, you can let that one slide because it was an over-the-counter, but certainly with Povetkin and Ortiz, they were not, taking substances which any athlete should be taking okay who's any athlete who's trying to operate within the rules so Eddie Hearn has shown himself to be an opportunist in the past where he said fighters who pop for PED should be banned for life but as soon as he had opportunities to work with fighters who were good that happened to pop for PEDs in the past he had no issue with it I suspect that if Eddie Hearn was in Bob Arum's position, he would also be contemplating working with Jarrell Miller. I mean, he's even said that he's not closing the door on Jarrell Miller altogether. I mean, again, this is a guy who said drug cheats should be banned for life. Now, Jarrell Miller, as far as I'm concerned, this is my opinion, he is a pathological liar. I don't believe the explanations that Jarrell Miller's coming out with in his latest interviews I think this guy is so full of it, it's unreal. 
you cannot trust, in my opinion, you can't trust a word that comes out of Jarrell Miller's mouth with regards to this PED issue. I think he is guilty as hell, in my opinion, and knowingly and intentionally took these substances. I don't buy this whole elbow injury and the substances got into him unbeknownst, you know, w- without his knowledge. I don't buy it. I think Jarrell Miller is a compulsive and pathological liar. That's what I think he is. Um, and I'll talk about the possibility of Jarrell Miller and Tyson Fury facing off later on this year in a different video. But back to the main point of this video, Eddie Hearn, virtue signaling, trying to win some brownie points with the fans, trying to have a little dig at Bob Arum, but he's making himself look silly because this is a guy who has worked with multiple PED users in the past, people who have not just been popped once, but multiple times, and he's been happy to work with them. I mean, how much have a banded Luis Ortiz have for any of the times he got popped? How much of a band did Povetkin have for any of the times that he got popped? Did either one of them show remorse? I don't remember Povetkin showing any remorse. So Eddie Hearn is an opportunist, just like Bob Arum, just like most promoters out there. When opportunity knocks, he's going to take the opportunity, even if it means contradicting something he said in the past. He's in this game to make money. Now, here's my stance on PED users in boxing. We don't need drugs in boxing. We definitely want the sport to be safer. Therefore, I'm a big advocate for VADA, okay? At the same time, I am conflicted. I've said this many times. I'm conflicted when it comes to how we punish drug cheats because when Ortiz got popped and when Povetkin got popped, very shortly after they got popped, I was making videos saying, you know what? As much as these guys should be punished, I'm not going to lie. I still enjoy watching them fight. And I want to see Ortiz fight again. I want to see Povetkin fight again, just as a selfish fan. Obviously, when they step back in the ring next time, I want to make sure there's Vada testing and all that kind of stuff. But, you know... I I can't lie and say I want them to be banned for life because the selfish fan in me doesn't want them to be banned for life because I like watching them. One possible solution for PED users, people who have been popped for PEDs before, is that all of the different sanctioning bodies make it mandatory for people who have popped for PEDs in the past, make it mandatory for every single one of them to have VADA testing for all of their fights. And if need be, they themselves, the fighter, will have to pay for the VADA testing and it's not cheap. That would be, I guess, somewhat of a deterrent. Obviously, the fighters in big title fights like Miller against Joshua, one of the, uh, I guess, punishments, if you will, is the fact that the fight was called off and he missed out on a big payday. But you could go further than that, like I just uh, further, further than that, like I just said, and introduce a system where, if Miller is to fight again, under any sanctioning body, he has to pay for his own VADA testing, or maybe him and his opponent's VADA testing, but at a bare minimum, his. That way, even though we know he's popped positive in the past, going forward, we can be assured that he's gonna be clean. And he's going to have to pay for it, no matter how small his purse is, he's going to have to come up with that, whatever it is, 15, 25 grand, every single time he fights to pay for the VADA testing. Yeah? So, that's my take on PED users. The selfish fan in me is kind of reluctant to see fighters banned for life. I'm not going to lie. I've always said this, you know, this is something I've been consistent with over the past couple years, talking about Povetkin and Ortiz specifically. I still want to see them fight. You know, I I like their styles. I like their ability. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. But I know a lot of people have got strong feelings. And there are a lot of hardline people who say, no, ban them for life. You know, they're on some Tony Bellew type flex where they're like, no, just ban them all for life. Make an example of them. We don't need PED users in boxing. And I get that. I definitely get it. Because as so many people have said, Adam Booth has said it. Nothing is going to be done about it until somebody dies as a result of someone being on PEDs. I mean, it might have already happened for all we know. 
You know, someone might have been seriously injured or killed as a result of an opponent who was on PEDs. I mean, we've caught, uh, you know, fighters have been caught with plaster in their hand wraps, you know, plaster of Paris in their hand wraps before and all kinds of other stuff has gone on. So who knows? But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about everything I've talked about in this video. In my opinion, Eddie Hearn is making himself look silly. I think that he in Bob Arum's position would do exactly like Bob Arum is contemplating doing and that is putting Tyson Fury in with, against Jarrell Miller because it's a very sellable fight. You've got two brash, cocky, trash-talking guys, one of them a Brit, another an American. It's much easier to sell something like that than it is Tyson Fury versus Tom Schwartz. So I could see exactly why Bob Arum uh, would be contemplating that fight. And it's actually a matchup I quite like. It's certainly a huge step up from Tom Schwartz, but again, I'll talk about it in a separate video. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.